Hi everyone, Assalamualaikum. Okay, uh, this video I will continue the last part which is oligopoly. We have covered um, perfect competition, monopoly, monopolistic and the last one is oligopoly. What is oligopoly? Oligopoly means, okay, oligo, the word oligo means few. Okay, a few. Polyseller means that few seller in the industry. Okay, let's define the, the oligopoly. A market in which there are only a few firms in the industry produces either identical or differentiated product and entry of new firms is difficult. Okay, for example, automobile, cement, television, uh, airlines, telecommunication, Mm, and many more okay oh, for for example airlines we have three airlines main airlines in malaysia a asia mass um, including firefly and mass wing uh, and malindo for telecommunication we have dg maxis cellcom u mobile uh, red one mm, yeah and uh, one X, yeah. okay, and that's for telecommunication. Telecommunication, and also supermarket, for example, Tesco, Aeon, hmm, uh, lagi, uh, Tesco, Aeon, Giant, okay, a large market share, right? So characteristic to oligopoly, few in number but large in size. For example, tadi airlines. Sikit je, number dia tiga je. Tapi market share untuk setiap airline tu besar. Okay. The types of product adalah homogenous. Homogenous ataupun identical. Maksudnya macam sama je. Sama jenis ataupun differentiated. We can differentiate uh, the the company based on the brand ataupun logo ataupun color. Uh, contoh kalau uh, petroleum is homogenous. Sama je. Kali petroleum tu. Tapi kalau car, differentiated. Kita nampak ada Honda, ada Proton, Pro2. So, daripada logo tu sendiri, kalau logo Harimau tu, tu adalah Proton. Kalau logo P macam tu, uh, Pro2. Ataupun Mas, ataupun BMW. Ada logo yang kita boleh differentiate the product. Okay, next characteristic is mutual interdependence. The firms always consider the the reaction of their rivals mm -hmm. when choosing the price, sales target, advertising budget. For example, uh, okay, company each company dia akan tengok reaction dia competitor. Contoh kalau Maxis, apa apa advertising ataupun sales target ataupun price dia akan tengok reaction Cellcom dan juga DG. Sama juga dengan DG. Dia akan tengok reaction Maxis dan juga uh, Maxis dan juga uh, Cellcom. Okay. And barriers to enter the, the industry. The firms will restrict new entrants into the market. The types of barriers are economies of scale, forces to merge, ownership of patents and copyright. Susah nak masuk. Dia macam monopoli juga. Sangat susah untuk nak masuk industri. Uh, kalau airlines dulu pernah ada Ryanair air sekejap je tak boleh nak tak boleh nak apa survive dalam industri okey so dalam uh, oligopoli kita ada theory of price rigidity and king demand curve jadi king demand curve juga dikenali sebagai uh, Sweezy's model Sweezy ni adalah profesor Sweezy yang develop theory of price rigidity dan juga kink demand curve. Jadi based on this theory there are two assumptions. The first one is if a firm reduce the price of its product, the other firms will follow and reduce the price too. Contoh kalau kita tengok uh, kalau kita tengok pada telecommunication eh, telco contoh kalau kalau DG reduce the price Maxis dengan Cellcom akan follow. Akan follow reduce the price too. Okay. Tapi kalau DG increase the price. Maxis dengan Cellcom tak akan follow. 
okay if a firm the second assumption if a firm increases the price the other firms will not increase their price but maintain the same price okay jadi change demand curve rupanya begini okay actually we have two demand curve here okay two demand curve the first one the first demand curve and this one the second one jadi dia ada dua macam ni satu elastic dan satu lagi inelastic jadi untuk elastic bila price increase contohnya hmm, contohnya macam DG naikkan harga okey kalau dinaikkan harga even sikit other firms will not follow uh, rivals their competitor tidak tak akan ikut reduce the price jadi re, uh, remaining customer dia akan pergi beralih kepada kompetitor jadi kuantiti akan drop lebih banyak walaupun DG naikkan harga sedikit Maxis dan Sekom tak akan naikkan harga dia maintain jadi customer DG akan lari kepada um, Maxis dengan Sekom that's why the quantity akan drop dengan besar ok dan untuk kalau DG turunkan harga ok turunkan harga sikit Maxi dengan Sekom akan mengikut turunkan harga juga. Jadi, kalau diturunkan harga, customer DG akan bertambah. Tapi sedikit sahaja. Sebab customer, uh, sebab ada telco pun turunkan harga yang sama. Okay. That's why, untuk demand, uh, king demand curve ni, dia ada king point dia kat sini. Okay. That's, uh, disebabkan ada dua demand curve ni, dijadikan teori king demand curve jadi kita adalah yang bersambungan tu dia akan jadi bentuk dia macam ni ini adalah king point dia macam ada patah kat sini ok dia ada uh, corner kat sini ini adalah king point jadi price is rigid at P star and Q star tak boleh nak naikkan ataupun turunkan harga sebab dua-dua akan mengurangkan revenue ok clear kat sini ya. Jadi the the point dia adalah P star and Q star. Rigid dekat sini. Rigid maksudnya dia rigid dia tetap kat situ lah. Ok. Ni untuk demand curve. Demand ataupun AR. Untuk MR disebabkan ada dua demand curve tadi yang saya cerita tadi. Ada dua demand curve. So we have to marginal revenue curve. Okay, ini adalah marginal revenue ni MR1 MR2 dan MC akan lies dekat point yang terputus ni dekat garis yang terputus ni dia akan antara MC1 to MC2 dia akan move around here up and down ok so ini adalah demand curve and MR curve for oligo poly kalau you tengok sini, bila ada king point macam ni, automatic you will know this is oligopoly. Differ, difference, um, uh, dia kontra dengan, kontradik dengan uh, perfect competition, monopoly dan juga monopolistic. Oligopoly, dia ada king point macam tu. Okay. Next, for the short run equilibrium. For the short run equilibrium, oligopoli sama juga dengan perfect competition dan juga monopoli dan juga monopolistic they will earn oligopolis oligopolis is the firm under oligopoli market structure oligopolis will earn three types of profit which is supernormal, normal and subnormal, mungkin dia akan untung besar, mungkin tak untung tak rugi dan juga kemungkinan akan mengalami loss ok So kat sini sama juga how to di how to differentiate between uh, supernormal, normal and subnormal we look at AC. Okey, AC dan juga AR. Jadi kalau AC, uh, kalau untuk untuk supernormal profit AC must be low than AR. This one is AR. Demand curve is AR. So AC must be below than AR. Untuk normal AC tangent dengan AR dan juga bila loss 
average cost is more than average revenue. So, kat sini berapa dia punya profit maximizing level of price and output? Always at key point, which is 10 and 10. Okay, 10, price is 10, quantity is 10. It's not move to any point. Mesti dekat sini je dekat key point. Sama juga dengan normal profit. Kalau kita tengok sini, price dia 8 and 10. Dan untuk loss pun sama. Jadi, pengiraan untuk mendapatkan profit, total revenue minus total cost. So, you darabkan untuk dapat total revenue 10 times 10 which is 100. And average cost, total cost is 8 times 10. 80. Means that the profit is 20. 100 minus 80. Untuk normal, um, average revenue dia 8 times 10 equals to 80. Dan juga um, marginal revenue, uh, sorry, average revenue, total revenue 8 times, average cost, sorry, average cost 8 times 10. Jadi sama juga, total revenue 80 minus 80 equals to 0. So normal profit means no profit or no loss. Dan juga the last one, subnormal profit. Untuk subnormal profit, we have uh, average cost, 9 times 10, 90. Average revenue, total revenue, 8 times 10, 80. Jadi, total revenue, 80 minus 90 equals to negative 10. So, ada rugi, negative 10. Okay. For the long run, this one is for the short run. For the long run, because of high barriers to enter the industry, so each oligopolis will earn super normal profit. Okay, because no competitor. Dia susah nak masuk. Ada beberapa competitor. Tapi susah nak masuk dalam industri ni. Jadi, as a summary, Untuk market structure, yang PC adalah perfect competition dan monopolistic competition, monopoly and oligopoly. Untuk short run profit, all four market structure will earn three types of profit. Super normal, normal and subnormal profit. Untuk long run profit, perfect competition and monopolistic competition will earn only normal profit. Why? Because of easy to enter and exit from the market. Untuk monopoly and oligopoly, they will earn super normal profit in the long run because of high barrier. Susah nak enter this industry. Jadi, kompetitor dia tak ramai ataupun tak ada kompetitor. Jadi, this firm, this oligopolis and monopolies will earn super normal profit. Okay. Uh, I hope you guys understand. And this end of the uh, chapter so we had covered how to get the profit maximum level of output and price perfect competition monopolies monopoly monopolistic competition and also the last one oligopoly if you have any question just ask me uh, i will try my best to answer you your question okay thank you bye